Hello friends, welcome to Idle Coaching. The topic today we are covering is Macroeconomics Classical versus Keynes Theory in English and this is part 1. The topics here we will be covering are Classical Theory of Save versus Keynes Theory, Aggregate Demand, Aggregate Supply, Propensity to Consume and Save, Determination of Income and Employment, Full Employment and Underemployment, Excess and deficit demand and their remedies and last will be the credit expansion and government expansion. The sequence may not be like this, but we'll be covering all these topics. So let's start with classical theory of say versus schemes theory. And in that there is classical theory assumption. Uh, before that, I want to highlight all those uh, aspects why this classical theory is being made. Actually, 200 years ago, when few economists gathered together and they made a theory they made this theory with some assumptions they have assumed presumed actually and said that if these assumptions are being fulfilled then all theory will work so what were those assumptions every theory has some assumptions which could be working and when those assumptions will work and when those assumptions will not work so very first assumption is there is the existence of full employment in the long run without inflation. Without inflation, there should not be inflation. And if we consider long run, a long period of time, then the full employment is normally achieved. In short run, it may be that people are not working, people are not employed, but in long run, there is a condition of full employment. So what is this full employment? Full employment means two things should be fulfilled. Very first is ability. Person should be able and then he should be willing. Able means he should be properly educated, documentally, he should be physically fit to do that kind of job and he could be willing also. Means he is having that interest to work. And also the condition is that they, these persons who are able and willing, they should be getting the wages which are available at that time. They are ready to do work at the available wages. And if such conditions is being fulfilled by people, then those people when employed is known as full employment. That is the condition of full employment. Okay. Second assumption was there is a laissez-faire capitalist economy without government interference. Now what does this mean? Laissez-faire has the meaning that there, there should be a freedom. Freedom uh, leave, leave them to their own situation so that they can adjust they can automatically adjust according to the situation for example if a, in a classroom teacher has given the liberty to student that they should talk they can also uh, uh, study by themselves uh, they can follow any kind of rules then the condition is known as laissez sphere okay and in economy when this is given that means there should not be interference of any uh, object or any kind of uh, body uh, especially government let us understand this with an example suppose there is a market so what happens in market there is a demand people ask for something they want to buy something and to fulfill their demand there should be a supply and if you want to supply something some commodity or something in the market you what you have to do you have to produce something that means you need required production and for production you need people so you will hire someone and you will give employment so what is happening automatically demand is creating supply and supply is creating production and production is creating employment and everything is going on automatically in this market without the interference of the government okay next is it is a closed economy without foreign trade. Now what does it mean? It means that likewise government interference there should not be any interference of foreign trade also. If the economy is closed that means that people should not be allowed to export or import or any kind of foreign agency should not be allowed to enter your market there should be a closed economy then only this is the assumption assumed by the classical approach and they have argued that if 
it is fulfilled then our theory will work the next assumption is there is a perfect competition in labor and product markets now what this perfect competition means people who are uh, listening my video must be knowing this perfect competition but I am making this video for those who are at zero and they want to learn everything from beginning so let us understand about perfect competition there should be homogeneous product means perfect competition is the market where the product should be homogeneous what does it mean a product which is alike the alike other products for example there should be a likeness uh, if we take a market of fruits so there are only fruits there would be different different fruits but it is a market of fruits it is a market of vegetables it is a market of shoes so the product should be homogeneous the first condition for perfect competition second is there should be large buyers and sellers means number of buyers should be large number of sellers should be large because if this situation is not happening then perfect competition will not work for example if there is only one buyer and there are number of sellers what will happen seller will try to influence that buyer by saying that will be reducing price other will say I will reduce more the third one will say I will reduce more and more and more and if the situation is opposite there is only one seller and number of buyers then what will happen the seller will try to raise the price because now he is free he is having monopoly to raise the prices he can black market his products so these two conditions are not good for perfect competition there should be a large number of buyers and sellers next is no artificial restrictions artificial restrictions means any kind of extra, uh, interference from government or foreign trade anything else should not be there in, the, in that market then it could be said as a perfect competition next is no transportation cost also please understand this point of transportation cost for example if a person is coming to that market with his products from 10 kilometers or we should say about 50 kilometers then he would be giving some transportation cost to take that product from the, his uh, house to that market and to recover that uh, cost transportation cost he would be raising the prices of the products and the person who is coming from 2 kilometers or 1 kilometer and with minimum transportation cost then he would be having those, those products cheaper than the former that means the transportation cost is affecting the prices and so the buyer uh, sorry the seller which least price least priced products would be selling more so there should not be a transportation cost also actually these condition of perfect completion does not exist in uh, reality but it is being assumed or presumed by the uh, economist that if there is such condition it is said to be perfect competition perfect knowledge of prices and technology you should be uh, the buyer should know the complete knowledge when he is going to buy the things for example if you are going to a mobile shop and you want to uh, purchase a mobile you or ask them that show me the latest technology and if you don't have the knowledge of latest technology you could be fooled by those people and if you are being fooled then it is not a perfect competition because you should be aware of the knowledge of the prices and technology next is free entry and exit there should be a free entry and free exit of people in the market especially the sellers for example if, if uh, suppose there are people who are selling fishes and the price of fish is three dollars a particular kind of fish pricing three dollars and when they see that people are coming to them and all the sellers now decide that they should raise the price to five dollars and they collaborate all of them and together they raise the prices to five dollars what will happen people will be in trouble those customers or those buyers will be in trouble but at the same time a third person enters the market and what he did he started selling the price 
he started selling the fishes at the price of three dollars why because he was new he want to attract new customers and he got to compete all those pre-existing sellers too so he started selling at cheap rates because three dollars was enough for him and what happens all the prior suppliers or the sellers had to lower the price to three dollars that means the free entry and free exit works in perfect competition so that was the assumption by classical theories uh, that there should be a perfect competition in labor and product markets both and what is product, product uh, sorry the perfect competition i have explained to you the next is fifth point which is labor is homogeneous the labor should be homogeneous uh, what does it mean it means that the person who is qualified interpass or a 12th pass or a graduate he should be given priority or he should be uh, compared with the graduate people only he should not be compared with the person who is uh, studying in 10th standard or 12th standard all the labors doing a kind of job should have the equal qualification that is known as labor is homogeneous 